Uh, joining us this afternoon is going to be Christina Panetta uh, and um, Wadner Merbelson Jaffard. Uh, they're going to be speaking us, to us about bringing health to Haiti. So um, without further ado, let me make sure I'm good to go here. Okay. Okay, so in 2010, a Category 7 hurricane devastated Haiti. Christina Panetta, a physical therapist and founder of Panetta Physical Therapy, and her family traveled to Haiti to help in the wake of the devastation. One of their trips to Haiti, they met 16-year-old Merbelson Gaffard, which they called Wadner, by nearly all who know him, in the small village of Dufayi. Wadner became inspired to become a physical therapist himself. Christina and Wadner will talk about their journey of bringing better health and education to Haiti and how one person, one family can make a difference that lasts a lifetime. So Christina, I know you're here um, with us. You can go ahead and turn on your video camera if you want really fast. There she is, hi. So um, Christina and Wadner actually uh, recorded a video for us. So we're gonna go ahead and start that because uh, we never really, really quite know what the internet's gonna do in Haiti. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play that now. So bear with me while I pull that up and we'll play that video and then we'll bring you guys up as soon as that's done and we'll talk. except for that my computer is now going to be silly. I'll bring up the video. Bear with me for just a minute. Sorry. So I'm the one having the technical difficulties. We were right there. Here we go. Welcome. Imagine a natural disaster that lasts 10 seconds, but is so devastating that 3% of the population die. In the United States, that would be 9 million people. Picture the chaos, the confusion, the physical and emotional stress, that is what happened in Haiti. On January 10th, 2010, a massive earthquake struck, killing 300,000 out of 10 million people. To put it in perspective, the population of Haiti is about the same as the population of New York City. Imagine if the impact of 300,000 people in New York City died and an entire city was leveled. In addition to that, another 300,000 people were severely injured or disabled. Many with amputations, including children. That is what brought me to Haiti. I went after watching two physical therapists in Haiti on CNN. They were surrounded by people needing help and they were shouting out, if you're a physical therapist, please come. So I went, I brought my husband along too because I was a little nervous. Eventually my kids came too. I didn't know anything about Haiti, even though it's actually relatively close to the United States. It's only three and a half hours from New York City and 90 minutes from Miami. But I didn't know important things about Haiti. Number one, Haiti was the first country in the new world to abolish slavery in 1804. And what makes it even more extraordinary is that it was the slaves themselves who overthrew their slave owners. Number two, it actually was the second nation in the Western hemisphere to win its independence against a European power. 
with the United States being the first. But Haiti sacrificed a lot for its freedom. Today, it is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, but it wasn't always like that. Prior to the 1800s, Haiti was the richest colony in the Western Hemisphere, but the revolution of 1804 destroyed the country. And afterwards, other countries refused to recognize and trade with the new Haitian government led by former slaves. I have to tell you though, although it may be the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, it's rich in so many other ways. There is a strength and a spirit and a sense of community that you just don't find in other places. Every person that comes to Haiti with me experiences and comments on this. The Haitian people are incredibly resilient. They're kind, they're caring and hopeful and very creative. Mirabelson Wadner Jeffred, my co-host, who we call Wadner, was only 16 years old when I met him in 2010. His dad ran a primary school in the rural mountains of Haiti where people survived on $2 a day by farming. I thought it would be interesting for you to hear what a typical day is like for a young Haitian student. Wadner, welcome. Thank you, Christina. So tell us, do most students have electricity? Most of the students don't have electricity in, in Dufai, where I am from. Hmm. How about running water? So running water is a problem in, in Dufai because we have only one system that is distribute um, the water from a, from a water source. But this water source needs to be protected by, by the trees. Some of the, uh, some of the people from the population, they cut those trees. And now the, that this has the, the water to decrease. I understand. So because the trees have been cut, this is causing the water source to not be protected. And now there's not enough water for the people in Dubai. Right? Sure, sure, sure. Wow. So tell me about what the students have to do before they even make their way to school. So before uh, they make their way to school, they need to, to fight out some water and fire wood uh, uh, to, for fire, cook something, take it back and make their way to go to school. Wow, that's a lot to do before school. And how long do they, the students actually have to walk? to come to school. They have to walk one or two hours. That's, that's a long way. Yeah, it is. And so then after school, what is, what is that like? So after school, the thing is, the sun is hot and they are hungry, but now it, it takes um, much longer to get back home. How do they study? Um, they can study uh, at night, but they can only study when th there is daylight. So studying and going to school seems so difficult. It's so hard. Tell me, why, why don't they just give up? What keeps, what keeps them going? Oh, the reason is they believe that education is the only way to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. Wow. So education is really a powerful weapon, right? So your dad, yes. your dad yes. has a primary yes. school, right? Yes. What what grades does his primary school include? Um, from preschool to seventh grade. And what's the age span of those grades? Uh, from three three years old to twenty one. Can you explain to us why there would be students that are 21 years old that are still in the primary grade in the primary school? Mm -hmm. So many students in Haiti, they have got gaps because uh, of having to work or having to, uh, or and not having money to pay their school. That is why in, in Haiti, education is not free. That is why you can find some 21 uh, students 
uh, 20, 21 years of student in, in early grade in Haiti. But your dad has a wonderful mission. Can you share with us what your dad's mission is? Yes, my dad's mission is uh, teach all the students to read and write. That is just wonderful, you know, because mm -hmm. we know that education is truly the key to success for any country, correct? Any, yes, any country. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Wander's father, he's amazing. He runs the school and he also has a flower making business where on the weekends, he actually teaches the teenagers to make decorations for special occasions. And he even works on his own farm before and after school. On Saturdays, he runs a program called Skills for Life, where he teaches skills to the young people that will help them be successful. And it's through this program that a lot of my friends have traveled to share their talents with these e eager young minds. It's a great opportunity for cultural exchange because when we go to Haiti, we live with a local family and we really get to experience the richness of the country and the culture. It's kind of like when you go to a convention, a lot of the gems and the nuggets you gleam are from talking to others during breaks or relaxing in the evening. A couple of years after the earthquake, a physician named Dr. Levesque asked me to come to Haiti to give him some advice on a layout for a rehab department he was interested in creating in an empty building near a hospital. He showed me a small little area where they were providing physical therapy at the time. I asked if I could speak to the therapist, but they said they only had one. And when I asked why, they said, well, there's only a handful of physical therapists in the entire country. Hmm. My comment to the doctor was, what good is creating a big, beautiful rehab clinic if you have no one to treat the patients? Why aren't there more physical therapists in Haiti? I learned it was hard to become a physical therapist in Haiti because there was no physical therapy school in Haiti. So that is where this crazy idea was born. Dr. Lebec quickly changed his priority from designing a space to designing a physical therapy program that would train physical therapists in Haiti. It turned out that Dr. Lebec was good friends with board members of one of the top five medical universities in Haiti. It was known as UNIFA. I called Dr. Rick Johnson, the head of the physical therapy program at Stony Brook, where I had received my degree, and asked if he might be willing to come help out. Amazingly, he said yes. He even flew down to Haiti with the head of the Stony Brook School of Health Technology and Management, and we, we met with past president of Haiti, president of the university, members of the board, the head of the hospital, and these representatives from Stony Brook University. There's a lot of details I'll leave out, but within the year, an agreement was signed between Stony Brook University and UNIFA to help establish the first physical therapy degree granting program in Haiti. An interesting fact about UNIFA is they accept an equal number of men and women in their programs, which include medicine, nursing, law, engineering, and of course, now physical therapy. Another thing is they try to have representation from all 10 regions in Haiti, not just the city of Port-au-Prince. Immediately, I called Wadner and I told him to pull his papers together and apply. And you guessed it. Wander passed the entrance exam and he was accepted into the very first physical therapy class. A lot of things had to be quickly coordinated. Dr. Rick Johnson, the chairperson for Stony Brook University, took care of the development of the curriculum. UNIFA built the classrooms and it felt like the entire physical therapy community in America embraced this mission. The physical therapy community came through with money to buy computers and equipment and committed to help establish physical therapy in Haiti. It was an amazing collaboration. Wadner completed his training last year. Wadner, can you tell us about how you study in physical therapy school with the electricity situation? So it wasn't too easy for me to, to study in Port-au-Prince 
because we have only um, two hours of electricity daily, but I need more than, uh, more, much than that. So I use a flashlight to study. And I remember being there sometimes when the lights would come on, like in the middle of the night. What, what, what was that like? So when, 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 when uh, this thing happened, it's like life come back to Haiti. <laughs> because everyone should wake up, stand up, studying, cooking, and whatever you want to do. Because uh, we have the power for, uh, for, for a short of time. It's incredible perseverance. And... Yeah. Why, you know, tell it, can you explain to us why is physical therapy so important in Haiti? So in Haiti, we, uh, it is estimated we have 1.5 million persons uh, suffer from disability. Uh, because in Haiti, disability is misunderstood, uh, misunderstood in Haiti because they are, uh, some of, of their family, uh, of their family believe that uh, their problems uh, are from curse or punishment, but uh, their problems need to be treated in physical therapy. I know, so many of these problems can be helped by physical therapy. Um, over the last 10 years, how many more physical therapists are there? How many therapists are there now in Haiti? Oh, so now in Haiti, we have um, 100 physical therapists. Wow, so five times the amount that there were back in back yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. And as I understand, the Society of Haitian Physical Therapists is now recognized by the World Confederation of Physical Therapy. Sure. Yeah. Can you, do you know what the number one priority for the society is? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, it is having physical therapy to be um, integrated in the health system in Haiti. Wow, that is a wonderful mission and so needed mm -hmm. in Haiti. Yeah. Wonder, we are just so proud of your accomplishments. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Wander chose to go back to the country and practice near his hometown, which is so important. There's such a shortage of trained professionals outside the city of Port-au-Prince. Wander, tell yeah. us a little bit about what you're doing in your community. Well, after I received my degree from uh, physical therapy school, I returned to my uh, to my village where where I am from, and when when I when I get there, I I have made so many workshops one uh, to invite people to to know about lower back pain, neck pain, knee pain, and shoulder pain, and after that. I set up my, my home private clinic, physical therapy, uh, where I, uh, I treat so many people with injuries, uh, handicap after, after a stroke, and lower back pain, neck pain, and so on. And in addition, I am a, I am a teacher in some local um, university in Mibale, close to my village. So I teach um, um, medical English, um, biology, anatomy, physiology. As I'm making money, I'm a professional. Uh, now I am helping one of my sisters and one of uh, my only one brother to go to the, to the university. And also, I each year, each I'm sorry, each a week, I go on radio to talk about physical therapy, how it can help so many people in my in, in my village. That is just so well done. You're making such a difference and <laughs> you're like, you're just such a great successful um, example to, you know, the other students in your community. Just, just, that's just so wonderful. All Thank right, you. so yes, in closing, before we go to question and answers, I wanna summarize this presentation and give all of you a call to action. In summation, in 10 seconds, in 2010, 300,000 people died, and another 300,000 people were severely injured. In 10 years, a boy from a village became a physical therapist, and he is now leading the charge to educate and create a healthier Haiti. And now my call to action, with a little help from my favorite quote from Pablo Picasso, you can see it hanging in my kitchen. 
The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So what do I want you to do? I want you to find your gift and give it away. You could come with me to Haiti someday and share your gift with the children and families in Wadner's Mountain Village. Or look around. Where can you help others with your knowledge and skills? You would be surprised at what a difference you can make. Thank you. Hi, wow, hey. what that was so inspiring. What a great video. Oh, and Wadner, you. Wadner is here. Let's see if he can join us. Uh, and we'll see if we can get his video and his his audio up. Um, such an inspiring story, Christina. That what that is amazing. And your passion uh for helping, obviously, not only in your your uh career but by heading to haiti and and um and doing the work that you've done is amazing it just sounds like it's been a life-changing experience for you totally and you know what the haitian people make it so easy because you know when you go to haiti they're so welcoming they're generous with their time and their their willingness to you know dig in and help and you know, it's, it's refreshing because they want to learn. Like, it's so like, they're just like, they want to learn. And they're so appreciative of that. And, you know, for me, it's just, it's, I would say more than anything, it's, it's why it's like what I think about it when I go to sleep. I think about it when I get up in the morning. It's like, it's like, it's why I do what I do. And I, I just don't think that I'll, you know, ever um, be finished. <laughs> it's like, you know, what really? You just, just meet more and more every time you go to Haiti you know you meet somebody else and it, it's it somehow seems easier to connect you know although the country has such infrastructure problems and communication conductivity problems I it's easier to connect like it's somehow they know each other like from a social aspect people aren't as closed off you know, like in the United States, would I ever meet with a, a president? I don't think so, you know, but in Haiti, it's like, oh, I know the president, I'll meet with, you know, I can set up an introduction. It's like, really? Oh, we didn't meet with the really? Okay, oh, okay, no, that sounds crazy, you know? So it, that's, it just, I don't know, somehow people are very willing and very willing to cross, um, you could have a very wealthy person, who is willing to meet with somebody that is a farmer up in the in the mountains and they'll come up into the mountains with you. So it, it, that's what's, that's like something that's really different in Haiti that just makes working in Haiti um, wonderful. Because when I come back here, I'm like, well, why can't it be like that here? Like, why does everybody, you know, why does everybody have to like live in their little towns? And you, you know what I'm saying? Right, I do. And I think that and, and so part of that made me think back to 9-11. Uh, and mm -hmm. when we in America experienced that, and that brought our country together so much. And so even though this horrible tragedy that happened to the excuse me to them, uh, you know, 10, 11 years ago, is that it it had a chance, it sounds like, to bring the entire country together, and they're still working to, uh, to rebuild themselves. Yeah, yeah. And that's what that's what the whole working in Haiti and coming back here, you know, the other thing that it's really helped to bring to light. And I've seen it like in all the talks with all the people that have been talking during this week of creativity, um, the World Creativity and Innovation Week. It's I have found that people everywhere in the United States, Italy, whatever country you're in, just like you're saying in 9-11, they're so willing to help. Like when you have a when you have a good um, mission or a good purpose and you reach out, like I have found that more people say yes than say no, you know? And they're always like, I, I think that people sometimes are just, you know, all you hear about on the news is a lot of times sensationalism and the negative things. But the truth is people want to help their fellow man. And a lot of my work in Haiti, I reach out to my neighbors, my friends, my professional community, and 
most people, I would say almost everyone, they're always like, what can I do? How can I help? And it, it restores that, um, that, you know, that how I look at like human beings and the, the spirit of others and that we, every person is such a good person and has so much to give. Right. Well, I agree um, a million percent. And I don't know if you're looking at all in the chat that has come in, but um, physiotherapy Joseph, I'm, I, don't, I don't speak French, I apologize, uh, but uh, commented that Christina is doing more than helping people in Haiti. She's changing people's lives. Oh, and, thank you. Jeff. And uh, yep. And he That's said Carlo. also, That's Carlo. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, and that, uh, and that each, and then Jane commented that, that each of you are changing lives. So that is amazing. And Wadner, I don't know if you can hear us, if you can unmute and start your video. I don't know if we can get you back. We, there, oh, there, his video, his, his audio is starting. You know, and see Jane, you know. I see Jane made that nice comment. You know, Jane is, Jane is a person I met in Haiti. She is a hearing specialist and you know, she is bringing um, sound to the people that, you know, need help hearing in Haiti. And she has just a wonderful program. She's been working in Haiti longer than me. And, you know, we connect up, we work on projects together. It's, it's, that's the other good thing when you work in Haiti. You just, I've met people from all over the United States that are doing, like what I find is it's like all these like small little groups that they're unencumbered by maybe um, rules or policies or, you know, I don't know, they go to Haiti and they do incredibly big things with just, you know, not a lot of money, just it's really that pure intention to, you know, do something good in another country. Right, right. And I think that your, your point is so correct that people, they'll say yes, because they don't know how to do that themselves. You know, it's almost like, how can I help But You don't really know. And then you don't really find the way to do that. But when someone comes and says to you, hey, I need these things, mm -hmm. it's very easy to say, oh, absolutely, we can help you with that. Not a problem can, at all. Can you guys um, active my, my, my uh, camera for me? Because you said uh, you, you need oh. to active. Let's see. And I see that Brendan said his son went to Haiti and it's actually true. His, there his son are. and their two friends they actually went and they they set up a summer school in Haiti where they brought um, these manipulate that these like um, oh it's called like math I forgot the name of it but they're like these tools to teach math to the students up in the mountains and you know we're talking these are these were like teenagers that you know went up and they lived with Wadner and his family and got to experience what Haiti was like and they and they worked every day with these students and you know they they worked with them they played with them they ate with them and you know it was a great experience and so Wadner I would definitely say that uh meeting Christina and everybody in in uh her circles has changed your life and I'm sure will have changed many many of the lives of the people in Haiti as well yes uh First of all, I want to thank you for, for inviting me to, to this panel. So I want to uh, thank Christina for all my heart, because if, if I can be a physical therapist today, uh, she inspired me to be uh, who I am today. And thank you, thank you, thank you. There's no more words I can use to thank you. I want you to know uh, I love you so much. I love you from my heart. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. So th th this is this is, this is how a, a day looked like in AD, and also um, I'm so proud uh, to be a physical therapy. How I'm impacting to to the uh, to the uh, com uh, to the population now because uh, many I get uh, many people know uh, about physical therapy, how physical therapy can change people's lives because in Haiti we have so. Many Many people uh, suffer from from chronic pain that needs to be um, helped in physical therapy. And, I, and also, I wanna I wanna thank Carlo. Thank you, Carlo, uh, because you 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 were you were a good friend to me when we were uh, at the university. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful! It's always a great community, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> sure. So I wanted to sure. ask and, another another quick. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask another quick question about when I, we were watching the video and, and it really struck me with a population that's so small for a country that's so small, there seem to be so many people with so many problems. Um, why is it that there are so many problems in Haiti? Why have we have so many people needing so much uh, physical therapy or, um, or, you know, that the children seem to be needing have so many special needs people? Oh, well, in Haiti, we have, we have uh, so many problems, so, so many infrastructure problems, like um, about the students. First of all, we have uh, uh, a lack of nutrition, a lack of nutrition. That is what you can say in, in, in our video. They are hungry. They are, they, they are often hungry after uh, getting, after uh, finish their class. And also, I think Haiti will be changed from there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because now we have so many problems, so, so, so many problems. You know, and, and one of the things, Wendy, is that, um, you know, we, we take for granted in the United States, you know, when a woman becomes pregnant, you go to the doctor, right? But it's, it's in Haiti, there isn't always a doctor available, like a, a maternal health doctor or a practitioner of that sort. So when in the United States you go and what's the first thing they do is they put you on vitamins. And there are, there are just some key vitamins that can prevent so many, they can help your spinal cord grow. And so one of the things that when I first went to Haiti that I was surprised and I had asked those same questions was, you know, you see a lot of children with, it's called hydrocephalus, but it's like water on the brain. Or you see children with spina bifida where, where is part of their spinal cord is, um, they're born with the spinal cord outside of their skin and it causes them to be paralyzed. Or you see children with club feet or, and the reason for that is it has a lot to do with the lack of not only some of it is nutrition during the, 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 the growth stages, but it is just a simple lack of vitamins. You know, it's the, it's the availability of vitamins. So, uh, you know, wonderful projects that I have seen in Haiti is there's a lot of beautiful like midwife organizations that go and they teach people to be midwives, but they do a lot of educating and trying to make these vitamins available or even in the rural mountains, sometimes it's not that you have to take a pharmaceutical vitamin, it's being able to know like what herbs, 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 yes, herbs, you could take that would give you that, you know, if, if you need vitamin B, it would help you to have that, you know, making special teas and kind of like going back to your roots, but just making those things available which can then prevent those types of problems. The other thing that happens is I'll find, you know, you'll find like a 13 year old who can't, you know, who has club feet. And I was always like, why is so much club feet? And what I realized is I'm not sure that there's more children born with club feet, but the same thing in the United States, if a child is born with a club foot, they're getting, you know, it's right away. They're to the orthopedic surgeon and they're on a program to have surgery where it just, the children just don't get the surgery. So that's another thing that I've seen. There's been wonderful organizations that have started to come down to Haiti to perform those surgeries. So you know, those, are, those are like kind of the lights that you see, you know, there's a need and more and more people are going there. And then you have surgeons that are teaching people in Haiti, you know, surgeons in Haiti, obviously physicians to do those kinds of surgery. Well, it certainly sounds amazing. And I will say that everything that I've ever seen and, and Christina, I think that at any time I've ever seen anybody talk about Haiti, uh, that I, the, the sentiment is, is very similar about how you become part of something greater than yourself. And I've heard that a couple of times from a couple of different people I've spoken to or heard presentations about their time in Haiti. Um, and it's, it's just amazing. So you know that the the love and for the people uh, and the people for each other is must be just contagious. They have, you know what it is? There's this incredible sense of community. Like in what I always say in Haiti is that like if you had a piece of bread and there was 10 people sitting next to you, you would never, you'll never, ever, ever see a Haitian person eat that piece of bread without breaking it and giving it to everybody else. Every single, you know, person. And when they need help, like up in the mountains one time, you know, they, we made picnic, we made a picnic table, but the most fun is every time there's an event, like they literally carry this picnic table up the mountain to whoever needs it. And so they're not stingy, 
You, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're yeah. not, they might not have a lot, but they're not stingy. So they share, you know, and they, they also, I find that they take care of each other. You know, if, if a family has, you know, something happens, they take care of them. His family, they have taken in, there's a little boy that um, was an orphan and he wasn't speaking and he was in an orphanage and he needed more attention. And like his family, he lives with Wadner's family now. You know, it, it's just, and, and that is commonplace in Haiti. Like, they'll be like, well, that's my brother. Not really my brother because, not my blood brother, but you know, he needed a place to live. So I took him in and those are just, you know, when you see that and it, it, that, those are the kinds of things that make you different. That's what makes people different that come to Haiti. Cause you, you come back and you go, I feel like, you know, this big compared to them. Yeah. We get caught up in our own worlds, don't we? And then when you're down, I, I assume when you're in some place like Haiti, that it, it totally changes your entire perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, a, in, a, in a great way. Right, Wadner? Of course. <laughs> oh, he's muted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we close, um, anything else that you guys have to share or say? I think it's amazing what you're doing. You know, I would share something about physical therapy in general in that, you know, I, I love that there is now more physical therapy in Haiti because it's not expensive to provide physical therapy because like compared to like being a dentist or doing surgery, you don't need expensive equipment. You need like a, a creative mind and you need hands and, and solutions and physical therapy. We don't, we don't prescribe pills. We don't do injections. We don't do surgery. So we help people in a very natural way, but it doesn't take a lot to help a person get out of pain, you know, or regain function. And, you know, one of the things that Wadner and I, and when we spend a lot, when we, when we kind of do our um, little training sessions in Haiti, a lot of problems that people have, you know, where they think the problem is, isn't always where the problem is. So that's a lot of what a physical therapist does. A physical therapist, they're kind of like a detective. And, you know, maybe a person has a back problem or a knee problem, but maybe it's because, you know, their pelvis is crooked and they're putting stress on their knees. So their knee is like the victim. But, you know, that's the, that's the amazing thing. Right, Wadner? I don't know if you want to share yeah, anything yeah. Like, thing about, you know, physical therapy in general, but it's just, it's such an important um, it can make such a difference in a person's life because it gives, it allows a person to get back to doing what it is that they want to be doing or what they love. Um, so I can say um, now people start uh, begin to know about physical therapy. I have like uh, so many patients, uh, they spent like uh, three years uh, buying uh, medical stuff like uh, pills for back pain. So when they come to me and I, 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 I tell them I have a special, a special uh, way to treat lower back pain, when they try it, it works. And now they, they, they don't buy medication anymore. That is the best story about physical therapy in Haiti. <laughs> yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just so wonderful. Like all the therapists, they're just like Wagner. They're like, these are young people. And they're like, they are the ones making they're out there like just reaching out and they have a goal like that society that picture that you saw they're so bright they're smart they're articulate they work day and night and they're really trying to um, grow their numbers so that physical therapy would be available just like it is here in the united states to every single person that could possibly need it and i just think that that's just a great you know goal that they have it is. And clearly your passion for helping has inspired many of the youth there in Haiti and Wadner, obviously your passion yes. and, and getting yes. everybody inspired. Yes. It's a, it's heartwarming. I, I just, I applaud you and I'm so excited for you and the future of your country because you guys are obviously the future of your country. And that is amazing. And you're learning amazing things and you're learning just to to do it and go for it and try it and you will help together uh, to create an amazing place. And Jane says, keep going, Wadner. She said that in the chat, so there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, um, anything else, Christina? This has been such an inspiring conversation. I'm so glad to have been able to moderate during this session and see that amazing oh, video. 
<laughs> thank you, Ali Agadi. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, yes. And I, I just would say, you know, because I know all my friends will be watching this, is it, it, it's not, you know, everything that we do in Haiti, there's an army of people, my friends, my family, my coworkers, the physical therapy community, the theater, the church, you know, in the area. It's just like, you know, legislators like Haiti, you know, they have all backed our efforts in Haiti. And the bet, what they love is they love when I, I share, I share the stories and the pictures. And that's all I am is I'm like that relay person, you know, between the two countries and, you know. That's it's all about the connections. It's all about the connections yeah. and the, and the uh, and the emotions and understanding and having a, a worldview a little bit larger than your own six feet around you. <laughs> oh, so smart! It's true. It's right? True. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for being here and sharing your story. And Wadner, good luck to you and everybody in Haiti and all your physical therapy friends. And the world is yours, my friend. So go and make of it what you will. Christina, thank you for all of your work and your dedication and your inspiration to everybody else as well. And um, do we have your information about where anybody can reach you for if they want to contact you about how they can help? I guess I should just type it in there. Sure, sure. I can do it how for do you do as it? well. You, yeah, go ahead. It's, sure. Uh, Christina at Panetta.com. It's very easy. I can do that. Christina or at Panetta.com. Or w that it right there? Yep, or www.panettapt.com is the website. Panettapt.com. There we go. So if you want to get in touch with Christina, ask how you can help. If you want to help any of um, Wadner and his friends, I'm sure they can come up with ways for you to be able to do that. For so, sure. I, thank you again. And thank you so much, you guys. This was amazing. Thank you so and much. Thank you. you. Yes. Yes. And so everybody, you have a great day.